Hey guys, welcome to a part of the podcast I call Growing Pains. These are stories of people who aren't just going through things, they are growing through it. Today on Growing Pains, we hear from Hannah Castledine, Hannah's incredible story of weight loss and overcoming setbacks through her relationships that have sent her challenges, life that has sent her challenges, and why she is doing it all. It's an incredible story from Hannah, and we hope you enjoy listening. I'll see you on the other side. Hannah, good morning. Good morning. (laughs) (laughs) Hannah, if you don't know, has got an incredible journey with her own physical challenges and that's led on to some mental challenges. She's a she's a single mom, teaches, she's got so much going on in her world. And not only has she started to take some physical changes, but she started to unfold all the different elements of her life and see how much further she can take this personal development. So thank you for coming and joining us. Thank you for having me. And obviously of course Rich is with us as he is every single week. Kicking ass and taking names, <laughs> fresh from the bruises of yesterday. How you doing, brother? I, mate, I, I ache a little bit from yesterday. I ain't going <laughs> to lie. <laughs> Hannah, I must say, I've just been looking at some photos uh, from where you've come from to where you are now, yeah. and you look absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. So, really incredible. Yeah, yeah. so talk, talk to us a little bit. Where where was you 12, 12 months ago? So 12 months ago, I was just into my journey. Um, so I've been doing Slim Well for two years, nearly now. Um, and when I started my journey, I was 25 stone, 12 pounds. Wow. 25 stone. Now, I took myself up to 23 stone at one point in time. And I struggled in just day-to-day life. Yeah. Do you know, so it's not like, oh, I'm heavy. It's I can't get up the stairs. Yeah. I, I can't. I can't get out of a chair very well. And it was a bit of a joke. You sort of joke to yourself about yeah. it, but you have those quiet moments to yourself where you're like, "Jesus Christ, I'm I'm 28, 29, 30 years of age. Surely I shouldn't be here by this point in my life." So, yeah. how do you feel it, it, it got to that point? Because you know you were heavy then. So I was, I was heavy and I had a lot of people say to me, Hannah, you need to lose weight. Like my best friend, my dad was like, you need to lose weight. You're going to kill yourself if you're not going to, you're not going to be around for And that's not fair. My best friend was actually embarrassed to walk with me, like next really? to me. Yeah. Because she was like, you're so out of breath. I don't want to walk with you. And it's really, you know, this, maybe this is a push that you need. And then we got into an argument one day and she was like, Hannah, you need to lose weight. You're not going to be around to see my 30th. You're not going to be around to see yours. And I turned around to her and said, I'd rather be dead and fat and happy than thin and miserable. You know, I was thinking about this yesterday when we had our first conversation, because you have, and it takes an enormous amount of confidence to do lots of things that you've done but the first thing that it must have taken confidence to do was let go of that inner rebellion because you know when you've got loads of even if you know something's the right thing to do when you've got loads of people around you going do that it's, it's in box number two it's in box number two and you're like just leave me alone yeah do you know what I mean do you have that rebellion where just because somebody's telling you to do it you're like no yeah. I don't have to do it. Who, who are you to tell me this? Was there an element of that? There is. There's also, There's always an element of that. And yeah. there still is now. Like People are like, do you want a bit of cake? And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, a bit of cake. Because there is this... Like, we all like the cake. Yeah, we all love the cake. We all love the cake. cake. Come on. And um, it is. There's, there'll always be something that... But it's the click in your brain that makes you change. Yeah. Like It will automatically tell you overnight. It doesn't come tomorrow it might not come next week it might not come next year it will come it comes eventually but I was stood in the mirror and I saw my body the, for the way it was and obviously I'd had a relationship breakup and I looked at myself and thought if you can't love yourself who else is going to love you so wow. when your when your friend said to you uh, that was embarrassed embarrassed by you or of you yeah. how, how did that make you feel at the time well she didn't she never used to really tell me physically she used to, used to walk in front it wasn't until sort of oh, something you noticed they were doing physically yeah when around and you. she's in the army so she's obviously okay. she's got the <laughs> big like come on you need to do it yeah um but it wasn't sort of until i started losing weight she was like i was in the reason why i was didn't walk with you i walked ahead is because i was embarrassed to hear you breathing your breathing was just like you would you body your organs were shutting down that's basically how it was and she said i didn't want to hear you killing yourself really that's it's so hard to be around somebody we think of that with with smokers and and other people that have these damaging habits because you know eating habits or the physiology of that is no it not is no different but it's very similar to ways that other people i'm going to use the word self-harm because when you see somebody hurting themselves 
if you feel like you can't help them, because obviously a lot of your friends will have reached out to you, maybe not strongly enough, maybe not passionately enough. They weren't the catalyst, that the big domino that shifted you. Yeah. But some of them, as you said about your friend there, were struggling to simply be around you, watching you do this to yourself. Yeah. Um, you've got to think that's that for them. I mean, it's really difficult for them, but also is there a part of you now that would have wanted to do this five years earlier or 10 years earlier or... I just don't think I was in the right f- right mind frame to do it. No. There is always, there's always something else that's yeah. going on. Yeah. And, and I always say, and I say it to my like followers and I say it to anybody who wants to start like um, a weight loss journey or a health style, lifestyle change, yeah. that you've got to have a positive find so if you've got a negative in your life let's say a relationship breakup which was mine yeah. that took over anything positive if you're going through debt or if you're going through um you know divorce or anything that's really negative in life like at the moment we're all in lockdown yeah a lot of people are struggling. So a lot of people are struggling and a lot of people have put on weight because that's a negative and yeah. you can't see a positive and that's what i've said as soon as i got rid of the negative of a relationship breakup and I decided I didn't want to be like that anymore that's when it changed for me so a lot of it sounded like a mindset so with you was food your your comfort yeah if something was upsetting you or or whatever it may be did you turn to yeah turn to food? always always turn to food and it's the same for any addiction like you know drink gambling anybody mm. who has an addiction they want more of that yeah. and that's what it is like food was mine mm. and I think food is quite a lot of people's addictions well food gives us so food um gambling all of these things even our phones mm. give us a chemical called dopamine so i don't know if you've ever sort of looked into it um whenever you get a sense of accomplishment or achievement or you know you've reached some sort of goal you get that dopamine hit you get that acknowledgement and you can access that lots of ways so there's a delayed action where you can do things like exercise or you can work towards a long-term financial goal and eventually you will get that dopamine hit when you reach that point. But the quickest way to get it is through things like mobile phone or is through things like eating. Because if you want to get a wonderful body, as we're talking about the physicality of things, it takes a long time to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard to sustain that for the long-term payback. Whereas if you want to feel good now, you can eat something. And it's it's guaranteed. You know it's going to make you feel good. So you eat it and it makes you feel good. Our phones do exactly the same. Things like gambling and stuff do exactly the same. It's a very, very easy exchange for us to get that trigger and for us to get that feeling. Because you were talking then about about willpower and about how people are struggling in this moment now with with COVID-19 and things like that going on. And I wanted to think about how many times we have to make decisions through the day. So you spoke about being in a relationship and how that was challenging. You will have been exerting a lot of your willpower and a lot of your decision making and having that negative in your life so so much of your mental energy as you were saying there was applied to that yeah do you feel it was it wasn't the right time and you didn't have the ability the energy to apply it to this i mean people like einstein used to do something very similar they used to want to use all of their decision capacity for their work so they would wear the same thing every day and they would eat the same food every day so they didn't waste anything on that because it's absolutely true i think you have a maximum decision capacity in the day so if you're trying to change a habit with your food or if you're trying to give up smoking, it's very, very hard for you to, for you to do something else in your life at the same yeah. time. So if you're struggling with a relationship or something like that or you have a child with a disability, so much of your mental energy is put into that that there really is nothing left over yeah. for you to apply that same self-discipline, that same or saying no to the food or saying, saying yes to exercise or anything like that. There's just none of it left. You know, you've exerted so much mental energy. Yeah against this this other person in your world or the child or the job that you hate or something like that and i absolutely agree it's really challenging for people to try and attack multiple things at once yeah what's interesting as well it's all about routine as well so when you was at your heaviest yeah talk to me about your day-to-day routine from the moment you wake wake up to the moment you went you go to sleep okay so (laughs) i i feel really ashamed when i say stuff like this but this was me like that was her when i was I'm still am her. I love how you refer to her. In the, in the yeah, because she was it's big. Important, she, yeah. she was her. I'm not her anymore. No. I still am, but yeah. I'm not the way she looked. And yeah. um, so I would get up in the morning and where I lived at the time, I was literally two minutes away from my daughter's school. So I'd get up about eight and I'd walk his butt to school, get there for about quarter to nine and drop her off. I'd come home, which is another two minute walk. 
and I'd sit and eat multi packs of donuts or crisps, or not really crisps because I don't really like crisps, but chocolate and stuff that's not good for you. And then I'd get into bed and I'd go to sleep until about quarter to three until I had to go and pick her up. Really, every, and every that, day. And that would be your daily routine daily thing. was how, built around her. And yeah. how long? How long did that go on for them? Oh, for ages, a long, long time. For a long time until I noticed what I was so doing. The next big question now. What's your new routine? It's a new what, routine. What's made, what's made the big difference? What are you doing now? It's a new routine. I don't nap in the day anymore. And <laughs> if I do nap in the day, it, it's took me by surprise. I'm sat on the sofa and I've, yeah. I've obviously needed it. Um, but now I get up and I, my body always wakes me up. I never can have a lie in, which is a shame. <laughs> and I get up at quarter to six every morning now yeah. without any like alarm yeah, waking yeah. me up. My body just wakes me up. And then obviously I get Isabel ready for school. Um, and I don't have breakfast when I wake up. I have it when I come home, which yeah. is which is you know it works best for p- dif- different people. Yeah, different things abilities. like that. When people talk about skipping breakfast or intermittent fasting and stuff like, that, there's nothing wrong with it inherently. As somebody, as long as people aren't actively starving yeah. themselves, no. it's just it's just another way to achieve a calorie deficit. When people are looking yeah. at how much their intake is over the day, it doesn't matter if you have breakfast or not necessarily, as long as you're not feeling famished yeah so i i don't have breakfast until i come home because my breakfast can take a, a lot of time mm-hmm. so like if i just have cereal that's two minutes shove it in but yeah. i like to enjoy my food <laughs> yeah. so you know i've come so far i want to be able to enjoy what i'm eating now so it, it could be anything like bacon and eggs and stuff like that i'll come home and then i go to work and my job is quite physical obviously you know up and down stairs and teaching children you know running around with them which is amazing because i never used to be able to do that i can mm. do that now with them which is great and you know dashing here there and everywhere in town to get things ready for tea or and then go back to school. So it, I'm active all the time, apart from now, because yeah. obviously we can't go to school, <laughs> we can't go to work. <laughs> but you said something the other day on, on one of your social media platforms talking about your students, and it really got me thinking about them because you've always been a very, very you know, gregarious, bubbly, really excitable, passionate person. Yeah. Um, and I know in their, in their sort of amateur dramatics and their musical passions, you have inspired a lot of students in the past. And I'm sure if, if we put the shout out, there'd be hundreds yeah. that would send messages in. How has that changed now? Not that it's gotten worse, but what I mean is you were always encouraging them to, to overcome their fears and everything yeah. like that. And this must have at some point clicked for you that this was one of your big mountains to climb, climb yeah. if you know what I mean. So how, how do you think that's going to affect going back now? Because you haven't seen your children. I haven't seen them for since we broke up, which was what, March? Yeah. So, and they, quite a few of them follow me on uh, many of my platforms. Yeah. And obviously, you know, their parents follow me as well. And, you know, I always say to my students now, I always say, you can do anything you can yeah. if you can put your mind to it. And so if that is getting on stage and singing a solo, I just want you to think that I've been in that position where I've not been confident because mm. of my size. Yeah. And But now I've found my inner confidence. You need to try and do that because you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. So did you used to sort of hang your hat on that one when they used to say, hey, Hannah, you should, why, don't you, why don't you go and do the thing? Did you used to reference your weight and say no because... I did. Did you so really? When I, How did they take that? When I was... When I was bigger yeah. um i used to we used to always joke i'd just be like oh well, hannah's too fat she can't do that yeah. or you know um i'd you know be the token fat girl uh, and do you know what it never used to bother me it like no, no you it know. gave you an identity in the yeah, group though, didn't yeah, exactly. you were that person i was the i was the yeah. big one you didn't need to be the most talented the most popular the most whatever because i was this girl yeah, I, was the, I, was I used the to have girl. the same yeah. when i was a big 23 stone muscle guy i didn't have to be smartest guy in the room I yeah. have to be the most confident because I was the big, strong guy. Yeah. yeah, No one needs to challenge me. I'm this. I'm, and, it, and what it really was, it was cowardly of me because I would never challenge myself academically. Yeah, I'd never put myself outside of my comfort zone where I could really grow because I was that guy. Yeah. I was just the big, strong guy. I didn't need to prove anything to anyone. And I can absolutely hear that echo <laughs> In what yeah. you're saying there, you, you, you were the big girl in the group. I was the big girl. and Big, confident, yeah. voluptuous. Yeah, you know. nobody needed to, you know, you know, I never used to have any issues until, yeah. obviously, I, I did start noticing I did used to work at a preschool and I was like, struggling to get up off the floor. Really? And that was as well when I should have thought, start, thought mm, maybe I should start, but then I didn't. I just carried on. Yeah. What you do, that's what just because your mind's not there yet. 
So how did your students take those moments when they said, oh, go on, because you're such a good singer. I'd give it please, a go. Please, please, go on, do the yeah, thing. Yeah, I'd give it a go, but it, it'd always be a joke. It'd never be anything serious. Who made it a joke? Me. Yeah, I was about to look for that is one. That, is that more masking something? Is yeah, that at the time? it exactly, is. It's yeah. masking the size that I actually was at the time. And, you know, I'll do it because it makes them happy. Yeah. I'll do anything to make them happy. And I say it all the time, and I keep saying, if I could take all this away from like this COVID-19, I'll take it away so you can do your show and I'd yeah. do anything yeah. for them. We will always do more for other people than yeah. we do for ourselves. We always, all do. yeah. That's why I think mums are so incredible. You know, the things that they have never done before, but then like when you, like the, the way you, the example you set for Isabel and the way that we inspire people after we've had children because yeah. it gives us that lease of life. We're doing something for somebody else. I need to because I'm leaving for these people. I'm living for my students. I'm yeah. setting the example for them. And that, that's massive for me. Yeah, definitely. So the doctor said to you, you've got five years to live. Yeah, Is if right? it carried on. So maybe, maybe less. So uh, with any addiction, whether that be alcohol, food, drugs, the doctor says that to you, um, you can still say, like, screw you, and I'm going to carry yeah. on doing what yeah. I'm doing. What was, what was your moment then? What was your why? Why so, did you want to make so the change? So my why was there was a 30th, I had a 30th birthday party, and I was, we had a grandma's and granddad's thing. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> and the picture that Did you have to get dressed up yeah, like a grandma. Yeah. Didn't oh. have to. You have Didn't to, have send, to. I know, I know you're to send, us that, send us that photo. <laughs> you I love a dress up. I love a dress up. <laughs> Any dress up. <laughs> Any dress up. I'm Someone barely it. hints or whispers. <laughs> I've got it. I've got it. Don't say no more. Don't say no more. I'll see you. See you Pete likes to dress up. Love it. That's yeah. a different <laughs> <show>. <laughs> <laughs> Only on a Saturday night, Rich. Thank you. So the picture that got posted, and I looked at myself and I was like, I need to do something now. And you got your hair in curls, isn't it? I have, yeah. I have seen that photo. Yeah. <laughs> so when you say you need to do something, describe describe your feelings. Needed, You're looking at that photo. What, I felt what sick. was you seeing? I felt sick. Like my I was next to my friend and I could see his size compared to my size and yeah. how I, my belly ballooned over his like stomach and I was like, I don't like the way that I look anymore. Yeah. And my sister and my friend was like, Come and join Slimming World with us, come and join Slimming with us. And I was like, No, 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 no. And then I was on the Wednesday, I actually went and signed up yeah. to it. And was that hot? Was that hard to take that first step? Or it was, was you... yeah. And when I got into the Slimming World group, I said, don't tell me how much I weigh. I yeah. don't want to know because yeah. I think it will either send me either way. It'll either make me more determined or yeah. it'll make me just want to, oh, oh well. Yeah. I know there's a problem. I don't, you don't need to necessarily, I'm trying as hard as I can. You don't yeah. need to tell me how bad the problem is because yeah. it's not going to make me go faster or slower. Yeah. I'm here. And I'm participating. Yeah. Don't scare the hell out of me so that I, I run away. But you know when you were saying there, Rich, about um, your five-year clock and maybe this, maybe that, and you said about that that breakup and the breakup being one and seeing yourself being the other, I think, and as you've said there, those were your those were your two big ones. Because you know when people say about, oh, you've got X years to live, people don't really care. Yeah. People are smart, so we go, smoking's going to kill you, you know? And they go, yeah, 20 years, 30 yeah. years. The long-term pain doesn't really scare any of us. Mm. Yeah, we're 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 destroying the atmosphere at the moment. Yeah, as we speak, nobody. We're, some people are doing some stuff about it, but we're not that panicked about it. We yeah. should be, and it's very important. But the now pain is what we always avoid. Yeah, and your now pain was, I can see how I look. Yeah, and this person that's in my world, whoever was in your world at that time, they don't love me, or I don't love myself. And you, you said so rightly there. Yeah. You know, right at the beginning, if I can't love myself. No one's ever going to love me. And that is now. Yeah. That's this right now. It's not in five years, not in 10 years. You know, it's right now. And that's what really, really triggers that change that, yeah. that I hear from you there. It's that's massive. It's that first step then when you walk through the, through the doors of Slimmer. Just about to, uh, you're just about to walk through the doors. What was going through your, what was going through your mind? That I'll never have a takeaway again. Yeah. <laughs> what are these people going to make me do? <laughs> what are they going to make me do? Because I've tried so many diets before. So many. I've done Rosemary McConnelly. I tried Slimming World after I had Isabel. I even went to Slimming World and lost a stone after I had Isabel. Oh, did you? And then I was like, well, I've lost a stone now. I'm yeah. invincible. I'm oh, fit. Yeah. I've lost a stone. And then no. Sign me up for the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that all went back on. And then I never went back again. I've done like the 500 calorie diet. I've done yeah. everything. Weight Watchers, but this time I think my click was there. The click was there. It was ready to change, yeah. and it was no more messing about now because mm. it breaks my heart because I don't want to leave Isabel. 
Yeah. Because obviously her parents are separated, but she's from a very loved family. Yeah. And I don't want her to be like, I wish I had my mum. Like, you know, yeah. when they go through hormones or when she's getting married or when she's, you know, having a graduation or anything that she big in her life that she accomplishes, I want to be there as much as I can yeah. to be there for her. And that's, that's your big why, isn't it? Your yeah. daughter. Yeah, she is. So, so people listening to this, you know, they the may, may be overweight and they're thinking of going to these places, maybe Slimming World, or they're thinking of joining their gym. Yeah. Uh, often people ring me up and they say, um, they want to start, but they need to lose a bit of weight first before they come down to the gym. Yeah. Did you, did, you, did you ever feel like that at all? Before you joined somewhere, you felt like you might have to lose a little bit of weight before you joined or? No, for me, I was just like, I just need to start Slimming World Mm -hmm. and then just do up my exercise as much as I can because the more exercise you do, the more benefits you get and you lose more. Um, But it works different for different people because obviously I was in so much pain with my knees and my back and my feet. I couldn't do much exercise and walking to school was hard, but then I pushed myself a little bit. So once I dropped Isabel off from school, I would go and do a little bit of running or do a little bit of walking and just try and up it every time. But, you know, some people want to go to the gym and, you know, healthy from there. That's, you know, each person is different. I just like, I'd be too distracted. No, I've had that exact (laughs) same thing with with a couple of clients who were very, very big when I started with them. And they have this fixed mindset when it comes to exercise. They hear gym and they hear high interval training or whatever, and they go, I can't, I can't get up and down. Mm. This person, this whoever, this class, these all these ladies in Lycra, they're all going to make <laughs> me jump around. I can't do that. And it's all about these very, very, and dieting's exactly the same, these very small, sustainable, yeah. marginal increments. Because if you go absolutely hell for leather for two days and, and break your body down to such a point that it, it can't adapt and recover. You know, we, we, we've spoken before about this uh, general adaptation syndrome between stress and then overexertion. And when your yeah. body gets into that exhaustion phase, you've gone, you've gone too far. You need to stimulate it. Like when you were saying with your, with your little walks, with your little runs, what was it? Am I, was it? No, it wasn't. It was bloody end of the street and yeah. back. Yeah, that was it. But your body could adapt and recover from that and then do it again. Yeah. You know, anybody, all three of us right now, we could all go and do a marathon. Absolutely yeah. right now. No, you've got to train for it. You haven't, it's just 26 miles. Either we've walked it, crawled it, doesn't matter if we could do it, but all Dri- of us would... Drive it? Or <laughs> <laughs> all of us would adapt differently. Now, yeah. eventually, and the couch to 5K is a wonderful example. Yeah. I don't, I've got nothing to do with it, but it's a great example where marginal improvements sustained over time can, can take you to that point. Yeah. Now, anybody could get straight up and do 5K on the first day, but they wouldn't recover and they wouldn't get that long-term gain. Yeah. So as you said there, it's not about going to the gym necessarily or signing up for this, this big impressive class. It was just recognizing what was pushing you, what was achievable with your own physicality. So you know, asking you to do a burpee at that point in time. If we defined fitness as a burpee, it's going to be demoralizing. Oh, yeah, I can't do, it. can't do it. That means I can't do fitness. That means I can't get healthy. That means there's no point. Yeah. Right, I'll throw it all out. Well, hang on a minute. You know, there's so many, the, the, the swimming, cycling, you know, just up here walking. Just some of the stuff you can do with, you, with your daughter in the yeah. back garden. There's so many ways to be resourceful to get that outcome. Yeah. I love what you said about dieting as well, because you tried lots of diets in the past. Now, Slimming World's probably gone through lots of changes over time. But fundamentally, it's very, very similar to what it always has been. Yeah. It, it'll be a, a calorie controlled diet that people participate in. So the system had never really changed. But the big change that happened was your why, because you were really... You were really into it then. You spoke yeah. about Isabel and you spoke about the new connection that you had to this journey. Um, but how far along that journey did it take you before you thought, this is me forever? Not just for, because a lot of diets, people say it's 10 weeks, it's 12 weeks, it's 16 weeks, it's whatever, before Christmas, after yeah. Christmas. Yeah. When did it become, this is a lifetime change now? Sometimes diets can be like a fad, can't they? Yeah, and definitely. that's when they never work. And you know, the yeah. ones you tried in the past, I'm going to do the 10 week whatever. It's not going to work. Yeah, yeah, or that's a special K. Do yeah. this for 10 weeks and just do a special K. Temporary change for a temporary result. Yeah. Whereas you are demonstrating a permanent result. So how much of a mindset shift is that? Yeah. The, the, the like nail on the head when it was like, this is who I want to be, was when I took Isabel to Disneyland. Yeah. And I can get on the rides. That was it then. I was like, I don't want to go back. Because you see, and for me, like, I see people struggle where yeah. I was 
and when you see them walking around those places and it being hot and you know being turned away from rides and I know how that feels oh, it's yeah. awful and I didn't want that and I didn't want that for Isabel as well getting on a ride and not being able to go on and enjoy it with her yeah. and then from then on I think it was, it was seven stone I'd lost by then I knew which is know, a human being yeah. to start with you know I mean you said by that when you said by that point Seven stone. Just, just let a listen. I know you've done more since then, yeah. but at this in- interim, let's let them drink that moment in for a minute. I mean, my daughter is four or five stone or something. Yeah. So you lost my daughter and your own and daughter, little, probably. Yeah, a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it was seven stone by that point, and yeah. you'd started to discover that more of the world was accessible to you. Yeah, it was. And I could. The, and the thing is, I can walk into Primark and buy clothes. I don't have to just buy a pair of socks or a pair of shoes. I can buy clothes. I can, yeah. And that's the great thing because, obviously, still losing weight now, I can just get rid of it. And yeah. it's not like a big, you know, huge amount out of the purse. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's using Primark to get things that I How can many have of with. your old clothes have you still got? A lot. Have you? Yeah, I've got trousers just and about tops. To ask that. Yeah, do you ever do you ever put them back on? I do, just yeah. To, just I've to see put the my friends in them. <laughs> <laughs> really? What's the record? How many friends have you had in so Three. Far? Three of you so and far. you or? And me. Really? Yeah, Bloody yeah. Hell. A pair of trousers that, and I, do you know what? I look at the pair of trousers and think, why did you even buy them? They weren't even fashionable. Because <laughs> they know, just fit they and they were comfortable. Yeah, they were comfortable yeah. and yeah, so I have got quite a bit of clothing still left and I think it's nice to ha- keep that because you know I want to be able to say I've done it do you yeah, keep definitely. do you just keep the odd one or two item you don't keep everything oh I don't keep everything no because no. I work I mean to be fair you've gone through an enormous change so this this is a little bit different than the example I'm going to give but when I work with with female clients and they've lost some weight I try as much as I can to encourage them to get rid of their old clothes because otherwise they're leaving a cushion they're, they're going well, I'm going to keep that in case I put a little bit of weight back on. No, 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 no. You, you've left that. You've left that door open. Is the problem there? You've yeah. left that opportunity that I might go back to that, and that will be okay. It needs to be a case that you know, burn the bridges, as, yeah. as, as some people say in some of the business books. You can't. You can't go back. I've got nothing to wear. Yeah. If I put on a little bit of weight and these trousers look tight, they should look tight because you've put the weight, weight back on. on. Do you know what I mean? You should not be fearful of that, but. It's that element of personal accountability. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I always tell people it's easier with money because when you've only got £100 and you run out of money, it's game over. Yeah. yeah? So you really pay attention. But with our bodies and with our, with our own self-confidence, we, I've said it before, we care so little about ourselves. Yeah. You know, I'll abuse myself all day long. I wouldn't do it to my, ch- my child. Yeah. I wouldn't do it to a friend or my, my family or a colleague. But I'll abuse myself every single day and people don't love themselves enough. You spoke about loving yourself. Yeah. And I think that's a massive one. But I love that you've only kept one or two. Yeah. So that's good. When I have had to give stuff away, I gave away like this sparkly leotard thing that I got in and it was amazing. And when I had to give it away, it broke my heart. Really? I really want to keep it. <laughs> and then there was a yellow dress that I wore only to a wedding once last year yeah. and I gave it away. And mum was like, you can't keep it. It's too big. Yeah. I was like, yeah, but it's yellow. She was like, there's another yellow dress that's a smaller <laughs> size. Just chuck it. I was like, oh. Was there okay. anything where you were like, oh, I've spent so much money on my clothes. Though. You know, all that money I've spent. No. Good. No. Because some people have that. Like They're like, that. oh, I bought that jacket. You know when you buy like a really expensive whatever, yeah. like a really expensive jacket, it's like 300, 500 quid or whatever. Like, but I can't because it's so expensive. Yeah. And, I, and, it, and that's a real, it, I call it ownership bias, where if you didn't own it, yeah. how much would you pay for it? Well, how much would I pay for a jacket that didn't fit me? Nothing. Yeah. So well, that's how much it's worth to you then. It doesn't yeah. fit you anymore. It's not... It's not you. It. Yeah. This is new, Hannah. That was never going to be you again. Get it gone. That's <laughs> yeah. it. Shoulder. We spoke. We spoke about the physical being yeah. uh, being a certain frame, but um, with being that type of weight, normally it affects our mental health as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, depression can come with it, and you know, just feeling down in the dumps. Did you, Did you ever feel like that with your weight? Did you ever feel just like oh, I can't be bothered today? Yes. I don't really want to do this. So I I suffer from like mental health issues and I'm I'm always open I, on all my platforms I'll always say if I'm struggling because there's no point sugarcoating it mental health is a big stigma that everybody just bushes under the carpet no, we yeah. need to speak about it and we need to speak it about it to you know help other people yeah. and when I was bigger I was depressed to the point where one day I actually walked out of my my garden and I only had my bra and pants on and in that frame of mind I yeah. knew what I was going to do I was going to go to wherever and I was going to do what I was going to do and that was to end my life because I was so unhappy really yeah I was really unhappy and you know but then the next day I wake up and then I 
just eat and eat and eat more. But as well now as obviously when you're bigger, yeah, you have the fear of that you're obviously not wanted. Obviously, yeah. like I said, I mentioned yeah, if you don't love me, love me yeah. if I don't love myself. But then obviously you get a different side of mental health issues when you are losing weight because obviously I have now skin, so I look totally different, which still yeah. stems yeah. back to the who's going to love me if I don't love myself kind of thing. Yeah. So, you know, it is very difficult, at, like changing your lifestyle. Well, the, if you have depression or any mental health illness, it does... It is difficult. And I think people people hearing you speak about that, first and foremost, for anybody that does feel comfortable speaking about it, it's really important that we do. Yeah. Because it opens the door for those who go, oh, thank God, Hannah, because actually I, I, I felt that way. That, you yeah. know, and it gives them that, that invite, that handle to be able to walk through the door with you. But I also think it's important to acknowledge that there's no, my mental health is more important than any other no. mental health. Because some people might listen to this and go, yeah, but okay, Hannah's lost 10 stone though, you know, and, and I'm sort of struggling with um, anxiety, depression, whatever. And I'm an, uh, an attractive lad. I'm an attractive girl. I'm, I weigh nine stone and I, I don't feel like I deserve to express myself because she's facing all these challenges. Yeah. What, am I, what am I really facing? And we spoke about earlier before we came on about this imposter syndrome about, well, I'm not important enough. I'll, I'll give my attention to Hannah. What would you say to people that may not, be going through a relative change as in as big as yours but in their world it is a big change that yeah. they're going through as well do you have anybody reach out to you who who is struggling themselves but on a different level so i have lots of people who reach out to me and i'm very very lucky to have these people that do because i always say and it makes me really sad but i always say that always check up on the people that you know have really been quiet because you could be the reason that they're here tomorrow yeah. because just reaching out for them that could be just the one thing that they need to hear on that day and I've had loads of people you know I've had loads of people who have lost babies and you know they've lost husbands or there's been a death you know or something really really str- and they're struggling that like my friend has recently her husband's just passed like all of a sudden yeah. and there's no warning and she's really really struggling and she says I don't know how I can carry on but I check in with her every day make sure that she's all right yeah. you know can I get you anything is there anything that you need you know can I send you anything and she's like no I'm fine I feel more positive today and if you just reach out to one person you could just be the reason that they're here tomorrow and that I always say that absolutely I think I, I think of mental health like a shower and what I mean is not we're not washing anything away but it has to be done daily yeah I do my own sort of personal check-in yeah. about gratitude every morning so not all mental health associated to this but I think it's a great practice for people to get into the habit of Let's use yourself, for example. There's lots of challenges you're facing, but you also still have a lot to be grateful for. Yeah. And I try and acknowledge that every day when I think of my, my, some of the injuries or surgeries I've been through or people that are or are no longer in my life. And that may put me in a, a position where I feel a little bit low, I feel yeah. a little bit depressed. Or, you know, some of the stuff that Rich, myself, yourself do on social media may, may make me feel a bit anxious, may make me feel a bit judged. Gratitude, because... In your mind, misery and gratitude can't live simultaneously. Yeah. You know, anger and gratitude can't live in that same space at the same time. So every morning I always try a little little thing, little pad next to my bed, list down five or six things because I've got three lovely children, yeah. none of whom have, have physical disabilities. And we spoke the other day about somebody we had on the show who had a physical disability and children that are born with a cleft palate or children that are born with any, any sort of thing. And I've got three happy healthy children yeah i've got both of my parents i live in a I live in a home that i own all of these small things yeah like it's easy to see but also easy not to see yeah you know and you were focused on your your weight at the time and your relationship but you have you have both your parents that love you and you have a, a wonderful group of friends you have a job that you're passionate about yeah. Do you, do you ever practice any sort of gratitude and how do you help people in that respect? See, I read a book called The book, the Magic, The Secret Book. I don't know if, you've, if you heard that. It's a really good book. So the what? The Secret Book? See, the, like, yeah, it's like a, The Secret, it's called. And basically, it's writing down things that you're thankful for every yeah. day, every night. So every night, I write down 10 things that I'm thankful for. Um, obviously... I do it in the evening because that's when I have time to sit yeah. down and do nothing. So, so this, is, this is like an exercise. So yeah, an exercise yeah, for the a, mind. There's this an actual book that you can you can get, and it gives you daily things that you can do, like whether it's writing a letter or writing how you feel. Um, ten things that you're thankful for 
for that day and you know and it can be something I'm here I'm you know I'm healthy I'm happy I have a home my child is fed you know things that are so small yeah. that you're thankful for for that day and it you know you do it every day and you do it until the book's finished and then if you want to you can do it again and any time that anyone's feeling low just do it because it it could change the way that you look outlook on life and really. they're small things because we look at them in the past as the problem. Mm. They're small things because they happened. If they didn't happen, they'd be a big thing. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah? Oh, my f- I fed my children. Yeah, so what? Well, if my children didn't get fed at all today, yeah. it would have been a massive thing. Yeah, of I course. have my health. Oh, yeah, so don't we all? Yeah, but if I didn't have my health, we've all had toothache. Oh, so yeah. there's, oh my God. If you get toothache, there's nothing else going on in your life. No, that is your it. life, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Toothache, headache. You know, any athlete or any, anybody that has broken a limb or something like that, oh my God, it becomes the biggest thing yeah. ever, doesn't it? And it's the difference between having to do something and being able yeah, to do to something. Do you know, I was speaking to one of my kids the other day about cutting the grass and they said, oh, I can't be bothered this, that and the other. I said, try and look at it like you get to do it. Yeah. yeah. Try not to look at it as a chore because there's lots of people out there that don't have a garden. Yeah. Yeah. There's lots of people out there, if we use our examples, that can't go out for a walk. If you said to your daughter, let's go out for a walk. I don't want to. There's lots of people who don't have legs. Yeah. Yeah. They don't have the, they aren't fit enough to go out and walk. Yourself, three, four years ago, wouldn't have been able to say, hey, should we go around Bradgate yeah. Park? <laughs> I would love to go around Bradgate Park, but I can't. Yeah. Yeah. And it's about acknowledging those small things that are easy to forget because they're here. Yeah. But when they're gone, we'll very, very quickly miss them. Mm, L- listening to what I've just said as well, I was interested in my martial arts school, we teach a lot of children. Yeah. And uh, we have a thing called the six task book. You have to complete these six, ta- six tasks. Yeah. Now, one of these tasks is um, courtesy and kindness. So they have to go out and do 50 acts of kindness and respect. So whether that would be hold a door open for somebody, smile, smile at someone, ask yeah. how they are. Now, these smallest acts of kindness, going back to what you said earlier, to a stranger in the street, they could be going through the worst day of their life. If you just say hello to him or yeah. hold the door open, it could yeah. change their life. It they really could. could. Potentially you're going to jump off a bridge. Yeah. You've just acknowledged them. The smallest act of kindness could change their life. And this is where society, I believe at the minute, we're going down a slippery slope. I don't very, know if you agree. Very, but very fast. <laughs> it, it's picking up speed, isn't it? So yeah, so it's just about the little things, isn't it? It mm. is, definitely. The small, even the smallest of words could potentially change We see that in lots of great areas of life as well, because if you look at a lot of, um, and I'm sure somebody might correct me, prime ministers, presidents, anything like that, Cub Scouts, yeah. yeah. Now, Cub Scouts and brownies and stuff like that, that is where a lot of these sorts of things live as well. We talk about the, the daily good deed and stuff yeah. like that and paying it. For, did anybody ever see the film Paying It Forward? I haven't ever seen it. No. Oh, my. You've seen it? No, I don't think oh, Kevin Spacey <clears> film, <throat> Pay It Forward. Everybody, you go and watch it. You'll love it. It's about you do. So you receive a good act yeah. and you must pay it forward to three other people. Now, it has to be something that can't be returned. It has to be something that if I do you a favor, I'm, there's, no, there's no expectation you're going to do anything for me, nor can you give me the thing back, if that makes sense. And it's, it's a wonderful film. But this kid starts it in school as a little project for one of his homework tasks, and it goes absolutely global. And there's people where it goes up to like, there's, there's one point where a guy sees somebody really, really struggling in the street, and this guy ends up being a millionaire, and he just gives the guy his car keys. And then he tells him the story of paying it forward. And the guy who he gives the car keys to is a journalist and he chases the story all the way back wow. to the kid. And it just started out with the kid doing something like giving, giving a tramp five pounds or something like that. And then he helped his mom apply for a job because she didn't have the confidence to do it. And those <laughs> tiny, tiny acts that you speak about there, you know, everybody who's listening, try and do that. You know, what, what, exactly what Hannah's spoken about, exactly what Richard's spoken about. Try one task. And if somebody says, because they will do it. If you hold a door open for some people, they go, um, thanks, I can open the door myself. You know, but if, if you get the rare person that acknowledges you for it, go, oh, thanks, what can I do for you? Just say to them, just, just pay it forward. Just do, just yeah. do somebody else. Don't do it for me. Because if you do it for me, I actually lose. Yeah. Because I, I don't get to, it was an exchange. I did you a good thing, you did me a good thing. I don't want that. There's something so special about being able to do something for somebody that can't give it back yeah. and then asking them. Because they may never do it. They may disappear. And you won't know if they do it or not. Yeah. But the power of knowing you've kept that wheel in motion it, it's it's huge. It's a wonderful film, has it? But also, just doing something it makes you just feel good, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Just like on a bus, give give your seat up. Yeah. Just, oh yeah. Just feel good, even though nine times out of ten now they, they don't. Go, yeah. <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want that seat. But just changing subject slightly. Um, like with any addiction, yeah. 
um, the road to recovery is about it's just being better than you was yesterday, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So it's the smallest thing. So we spoke about earlier in the show. You would go to bed for what most of the day. Yeah. So when you started your exercise journey, I mean, just getting up and walking around your garden for 20, 30 seconds is better than what you did the day before. And each day progressively, you're going to do more and more exercise and get better and better. So people listening to this right at home right now, and they're in a rut, that, you know, they're overweight, they, they, want, they want to lose that weight, they want to change the diet, but they just feel like, I can't do that 10-minute workout, I can't do that 20-minute workout. We all know 30 seconds is better than what you did yesterday. Yeah. Absolutely. But what... Day one of your exercise journey, if you like. Not to say your diet, but yeah. when you first started working out, what was day one like? What did you do? Day one was awful. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Tragic. <laughs> Obviously. And I absolutely hated every minute of it. I, yeah. I really hated I hated walking. I absolutely hated it to the point where where I used to live, I used to get a taxi people know from morrison's to brownlow oh really that's how bad it was and it was literally a five minute walk right okay it so was. i hate if you've got a good throw you could probably do it in two yeah <laughs> you threw a cricket ball and yeah. then when i found it and threw it again you might make it yeah. i think um and I, it was all oh, it was really bad and then i was like i can't stop now i can't i've just got to keep going I, my body's going to feel better for it yeah. and the days that i don't do exercise now i'm like oh you should have done it because yeah. mentally it makes you feel better mm. and it releases good endorphins and that makes a positive impact on your body yeah. and so I d- just kept doing it I just dropped Isabel off at, wa- af- at school I'm, I'm up I'm up what's the point of going we'll back to now. bed go, yeah. and w- go and walk push yourself and the best thing that I can say for anybody that is that is starting out and wants to do exercise just go for a walk push yourself a little bit further but have your music on yeah. If you have your music on, you it's can some motivation. Yeah. Powerful. Put that music on, and you can, if you want, sing along. I know I do. Absolutely. You know. So Hannah, talk me through. Talk me through your playlist. It's a playlist. Oh, so you <laughs> wouldn't like it? It's all musicals. I would love it. <laughs> <laughs> musicals and Disney. Uh, some pop and some, you know. 70s I love a bit of 70s me retro great, baby great great showman <laughs> yeah great showman <laughs> I yeah. do a lot of I have a lot of great showman a little bit of cats a little bit of Chicago oh yeah I love a little bit of Chicago but um I've really gotten back into um some of the things from Blood Brothers and Wicked oh right yeah yeah the, uh, they just cropped up on my playlist the other day and now I just I listen to things listen on to repeat I'm really bad at that. A lot of people have like a playlist of 20. I'll pick a song and there's something wrong with me. There's lots of things wrong with me. But I'll listen to it on repeat yeah. in, in the gym or whatever. And I had that with a few of the Wicked tracks the oh, other day. Yeah. Hannah, Han- Han- I'm more sad I didn't know Pete was a Chicago man. Oh, oh mate. <laughs> I used to go down every single year. Down to, obviously, I haven't been this year yet. I used to go down to London every year. Yeah. You know, Billy Elliot, everything that we used to go and see on the West End. And I love it. And I can't wait to go back. Yeah, again. I can't wait either. You saw the new um, Cats film just to go off Yeah, subject. watched it over the weekend. <laughs> Oh, I was really annoyed by it. There's so much because obviously I direct shows as well. Yeah. And my students are doing cats at the moment. And I just think I could do a better job. <laughs> no, it was starstruck though. Oh my god, the potential. Yeah. It's huge. CGI was too much. I know. It was very too much. And they strayed away from the story. Real story. I know, yeah, bless them. <laughs> right. I want to jump back to people in your world. Okay. I've spoken a little bit about your daughter, spoken a little bit about your partner. Um but friends that were playing a massive part of your journey when it started, yeah. who had always been going, hey, Hannah, make the change, make the change, go, 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 go. Yeah. Since you'd gone, you know what, I'm going to do it. And you started on that journey and they went, oh my God, she is going for it. She's yeah. going hell for leather and nothing's stopping her. You've had occasions where people that had at first supported you, and I think maybe because you fitted in their life because you were the big girl, yeah. as you stopped being the big girl, and you changed and you became more confident and more comfortable, more open, some of those people haven't stayed with you. Yeah, and I think it's sort of a blessing in disguise, really, because maybe they weren't true friends. If, if nobody sticks through you through thick and thin, yeah. then they're not worth staying They're around. fair weather friends. Yeah, they're there exactly. when it's easy. I yeah. found that a lot. I mean, people seem to want to be around you, not necessarily when the good things happening, but when things are okay yeah Mm -hmm. when things start to change or maybe even when you're you're going through a change yeah not necessarily for always for the good sometimes for the bad but then they seem to disappear don't they yeah that must have been really really difficult for you at times yeah it is difficult um sometimes because you being a single parent and being on your own you are on your own most of the time you feel so lonely and um you don't want to put a burden on your friends and you know i my life is surrounded by changing my life. Yeah. And, you know, I, 
I would say, you know, this has probably got so many sins in or this. I think they just got tired of hearing that. But they were the ones that were like, yeah, go for it. And clapped yeah. me when I lost my first stone and half a stone and everything else. But then things change and that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their op- own opinion. And I've never, ever gone, you need to eat that. You can't eat that. Yeah. You can't do this. You know, never, ever preach to anybody about it. No, and, and I've, I've seen that when I, and I, because I've done a bit of a Facebook stalk and scrolled all through your Instagram and all through yeah. your Facebook and stuff like that. You don't preach that people have to do this or no. have to do that. You're simply demonstrating a huge commitment that you have made to, to your own life. Yeah. But do you think there's an aspect of, because I know I've, I've had this and I've seen it happen to others, where you may not be pushing it upon somebody, but your simple existence, your, your actions and your daily commitments are making me feel bad. You know, yeah. you're going for things that I wanted to go for. Now, people may not have been in the place you were. They weren't. You know, they probably used you as a comparison. They probably yeah. went, oh, yeah, I'm overweight, but I'm not like Hannah, am I? Yeah. I'm not like this, I'm not like that. And you were kind of that end-of-the-road milestone where as long as it doesn't get that bad, I'm okay. Yeah. But as you started making improvements and then you moved either close to or past these people, not that it's a competition, but it unconsciously shines a light on the rest of the people around you, doesn't yeah. it? You know, It's like when you're with somebody who has something change and they suddenly start their own business or they have children and, and, and start a new thing or make a big physical change, it does make you reflect on yourself and go, well, I, I've always wanted to make a change. Yeah. And Hannah's, God, Hannah's just doing it. She's just, God, she's not like <laughs> building up to it. She's not, she's just doing it. She's doing it every day. Why yeah. can't I do it every day? And your simple existence sometimes, I don't know if you've had it, I'd be interested to hear, makes them feel bad. Stop, stop telling me how well you're doing because I'm not doing well. Yeah, I don't, I don't normally get, much negativity like that yeah. i get the more of you've inspired me to start again and this morning it's just exploded and i've had messages saying like you know thank you for putting on what you've put on this morning so i can see how honest you are and that's all i've ever been is just been honest there's there was a time when i didn't know my weight yeah. i didn't want to know how much i weighed and then there was a time where i wouldn't show my stomach or my yeah. excess skin but showing that shows other people that they're not on their own but you know sometimes you do get a bit of negativity that slip in there but block them they, they do they change in and out don't they i it's, imagine you've found yeah. that as those those people that belonged in your world or not belong who were part of your world a long time ago mm-hmm. as they've slowly gravitated away from you it may have felt lonely to start with yeah because you went oh god these people are leaving me but the amount of people that you've just said there who have been inspired, who have been yeah. drawn towards your flame, you know, they've, they've seen the heat of your flame and they've come towards you and gone, this is what I want. I need this in my world. I need Hannah in my world. And the power of those people, not that they're better or worse yeah. than the people who used to be in your world, but they're there for the right reasons. They're there to support you along this journey. And I know you've had some some massive connections to the people you've met. Oh, yeah, definitely. I've, you know, I, I've, you know, met so many people and... It's when I walk, walk in the street in Melton. I don't class myself as anybody special. I've, anybody that you meet says... Oh, a local yeah. celebrity now. Yeah, like yeah, people walk past me and go, that's Hannah. They look and they go... <laughs> and then they'll message me on Facebook. Like, Did you walk past me? I'm like, yeah. No, like, seriously, oh, I'm seriously. You are the local celebrity, but for the right reasons. I for mean, the right reasons, yeah. You're, you're talking, you're, we're talking about celebrities. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I ever wanted my daughter... There's lots to of ways up, to be famous. Well, yeah, but if I ever wanted my daughter to look up to anybody, it'd be someone like yourself like like so. absolutely an inspirational 100%. story like that and going back to a phrase you said earlier um you said um it exploded this morning yeah is that anything to do with a certain article that might have been released released <laughs> yeah today? like certain articles that have been released <laughs> this morning so Things, talk to us about that so basically i posted um a picture this morning of my skin yeah and hence why you know I'm so passionate about it coming off Mm -hmm. and the way it makes me feel. And I just posted it on social media and then people started following me on Instagram. And then from Instagram, when that happened, there was a crossover. The Daily Mail has posted uh, me and my journey on their website. And it's just gone... (laughs) Viral as this. Yeah. Yeah. And people have just typed in my name that aren't even on the page that I'm on and it's gone up from 8,000 to 11,000 in literally a matter of hours and it's just it's blown my mind <laughs> but isn't it beautiful to have good news in the world oh yeah definitely because honestly good news isn't very popular no 
people don't necessarily like good news. You know, I often say you, you see you see very few things on the news or on the television about celebrating good people. But anytime something bad happens, we're just attracted to destruction or negativity yeah. or violence, aren't we? So to see see something like that, given its proper proper place, you know, a piece of inspiration for people to to cling to. Yeah. Because we all need that now more than ever. We need demonstrations of people that despite everything that's happening in the world are still facing into the tough decisions. And these decisions aren't every month, every week. These are every day. Yeah. These are daily decisions you're having to make about how you lead your life with, with your daughter, with your job. And it's, it's, it's enormously inspirational for people. So we spoke about your weight loss. Again, phenomenal job with your weight loss. But <laughs> through losing that amount of weight, it's now brought another type of problem, hasn't it? Yeah, so I've got a lot of skin Okay. Like I'm not too bothered about my arms and my legs. Well, that that's will be what will be will be. Yeah. Um, but obviously my stomach. Wait, I've weighed it. <laughs> I weighed it last week, and it weighs one stone. It went three, and then it went four, and then went back down to three. So over a stone, my my stomach actually yeah. weighs. And obviously it's not nice. Obviously because there is going to be a time where I'm going to have to be. I hate using this word. It makes me intimate. Yeah. With somebody, and I'm going to have to do all that again not have to it's a really important part of life you know (laughs) we should we should celebrate it and i know you will have concerns and frustrations and and very paranoid about that aspect of it but that that's all on you everybody there's everybody can be loved and everybody will be loved and we all crave it it's an essential part of life both the physical the emotional even if it's just holding hands we're not just talking about sex you know (laughs) we're talking about being intimate and holding hands to people sex Sex. never whisper sex sex. (laughs) You know, it, it is a really important part yeah. of life and uh, we've obviously all been there at some point in our lives and we should all you know, aim to have that intimacy with somebody again. Yeah. But all of us have got a, a scar to bear for you at the yeah. moment. It's it's the physical it's skin. skin. Mm. Then there is a lot of it <clears throat> and I have to wear like pants and high and then like shape of pants in yeah. as well every day because I'm conscious about that. But then I walk into underwear shops and I'm like, oh, I like that bra and I like that pair of pants and I want to be able to wear that yeah. and feel confident and wear that. Yeah. But I just can't at the moment because my, my mind's telling me other things. I know I can wear that yeah. and I know that it doesn't matter what size you are, you can wear whatever you want. But my skin obviously stops me from... So what's the next step? What's the next step in your journey now then? Is it is it to to get this skin yeah. removed? So I've got another nineteen pounds to go until I get to the target weight that I'd like to be. Um obviously it goes on BMI to have your skin removed. Um, I hate I, BMI. I oh know. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> the NHS way. Um and then um I have it removed. So I have you know, I'm a single parent. I don't have between seven thousand eight hundred and ninety pounds and eleven thousand nine hundred eighty pounds to have my skin removed i don't um so my friends kept pushing me do it do go for me page i was like no i don't want to do go for me page no i don't want to so i finally did the doctors did say we will give you the skin removal if if you get down to 10 stone 12 now that to me i have a big bum and i have big hips um, my structure is probably not going to ever be 10 stone 12. Um, but I have to be there for a whole year um, to be stuck there before they actually give me the surgery. So when I actually have my skin off, oh, yeah. I'll be 9 stone 12 wow. less. And I'll be tiny. You'll be less, you'll be less than that. I'll be less because yeah. it's... it's you, yeah, so you've, you've weighed, obviously, you tell me or whatever, but yeah. it's everything else. It's the excess on your arms, on the back yeah. of your legs. It, there's more than a stone there. Yeah. So, way more. And, and you'll be emaciated. Yeah. You'd, you'd be, be ill at that point. I'd be poorly. And yeah. like lots of people said, you look amazing how you are now. Yeah, yeah. And when I, when I pull in my tummy in front of the mirror, that's the shape that I want to be. And I yeah. should be able to have that shape. But obviously, because the NHS said you've got to be that size, I was like, I could, there's no way I can be there. There's no way it's gonna it's gonna be a lot of fighting to do because mm-hmm. I'll still have a few years to go and oh, fighting yeah. with my brain. Um, so my friends were like, "Set up a GoFundMe page," and I was like, "I really don't want to." Like, you should see the conversations we've had. I was like, "I don't want to do it." They're like, "Just do it," and I did do it. And and what's the response been like? Positive. Yeah. Apart from a few <laughs> negatives, obviously, which you will get. You will screw the negatives. Yeah, you will get. You're know, always going to get and the negatives. Like, people are like, we're going through a pandemic you shouldn't be asking people for money i've not once gone please give me your money begging no. that is begging i've not i've just said even if you share it, it like sharing it gets you know but we give money to so many things and ultimately what we're trying to do unless somebody puts their time in because giving money is easy 
Mm. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not important that people give money, but giving money is easy. A lot of less people give time. So giving money is the ability for you to make you feel like you're making a difference in someone else's life who you're unable to connect with. So people around the world, people that's going to read this, this newspaper article, will be able to connect with your story and make them feel like they're making a difference for somebody that they can physically reach out and not touch necessarily, yeah. but uh, yeah. physically reach out and be part of. Because I used to donate money to, to Live Aid and send money to Africa and all that sort of stuff. Whereas now, I donate money to Rainbows in, in Loughborough. Yeah. Or, you know, I've, I've donated stuff to, to yourself. Because yeah. it's my way of seeing the end result. Or oh, oh, there's a Trumpton Fire Service charity. I give money to that because I can see the end result of it. Yeah. I want to know that I've, I want to see it. I want to know that I've made a difference. That doesn't need to have my name on it. It doesn't matter about that. But I want to see where it's gone. And I want to see that I've made a difference to that person's world. Yeah. So, so much power in that. And people can connect with you because you're so open about your story. But I imagine, like you said, it must have been so difficult to, to have that mental transition. Yeah, definitely. Just and, and it makes you feel good, though, doesn't it? If yes. you can give yeah. something to somebody that's going to help them and transform form their life, it makes you feel good about doing it. Yeah. So how close are you to your target? Well, I've not really looked at it since this morning, but it's, it's gone up. Like I'm nearly at the two thousand mark, so I've um, and it's only been on like a few days. Yeah, it's been on four days. So four I'm days. Like two thousand <laughs> already, isn't it? <laughs> and um, which, which is, is amazing. amazing. Yeah. Like I can't thank everybody enough. There's people on there who have posted anonymously, which is totally fine. I can see who they are. Yeah. Um, but they can't be shown, and which is amazing. And you know, my students have donated, which is great because they've been like, I'm not spending any of my money. I'm not doing it. You can have five pounds here, and it is. It is. Do you know what though? And I'm gonna I'm gonna use the word selfish, but let me carry on with it. Because there's a selfish act in that because they will have wanted to do so many things with you over the years that yeah. I wanted you to be part of the show, they wanted you to be part of this. And they want that Hannah. Yeah. They want Hannah without the thing that she did to herself to stop her being part of my world. Yeah. And if we can help Hannah get to that position, then we can see more of her. Yeah, definitely. She'll be here for longer. Yeah. There'll be more of Hannah showing up every day. Obviously not physically. Yeah. There'll be less of Hannah showing up, but there'll be more of Hannah showing up in my world because I want to see her on the stage. Yeah. I want to see her doing the thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so that's definitely. that. You know, People are happy to give when they can see the huge difference it makes in yeah. someone's life. So how can they follow you, Hannah? What's your Instagram? My Instagram, the funny mummy diaries does Love Slimming that. World. <laughs> <laughs> we'll post the link up to that on our, our podcast as well, won't we? When Absolutely. Is out. Absolutely. I wanted to ask you as well, because um, we've spoken a lot about, about body weight and we've both got, got daughters. Yeah. Um, we spoke briefly before about the um, schools these days and they've started weighing, weighing mm. children. Now, I know um, Slimming World and Weight Watchers and a lot of that sort of stuff works around um, weight yeah. and things like that, but I... Personally, when I when I work with clients, weight and fitness don't always walk hand in hand. So I'll use my my wife as an example. She yeah. rides horses five days a week. She's got strong legs. She's got strong calves. She's she's got a strong core. She doesn't. She's not very big at yeah. all. Anybody that knows my wife, you've met my wife. Yeah. She's quite petite, but she carries muscle mass. She's not a bodybuilder. Anybody that thinks she's a big stronger one, she's not. But she's always going to carry that. And I worry when people are so focused on weight that we miss the fact that the simple example is muscle weighing a lot more than weight. So yeah. when somebody starts to become a bit fitter and a bit healthier, like yourself, you've lost loads and loads of weight, so you're slowly doing a little bit more exercise. Now, you will struggle to get down to the weight that somebody has dictated to you. Yeah. Because as your body transitions into a stronger body, you start doing more walking. You've seen you've been out with your daughter on social yeah. media and stuff like that. Whether you start riding a bike, whether you start going to some of your friends' classes, you're going to get stronger. Yeah. You're going to build muscle. You're not going to be the next Mrs. Olympia, as people <laughs> worry about as soon as they touch a dumbbell. They think the bombs are going to grow 10 inches. But you're going to become stronger. Yeah. Just like Rich. <laughs> um, but that side of it, this is why we spoke about BMI. You know, I, I, I really, really have a problem with it because I like to think I'm fairly fit and healthy. I'm 6'4", whatever I am. But I'm always going to be a big guy. Yeah. Now, if you use the BMI, I'm obese. But I know I'm not. And any female athlete will be considered overweight, if not worse. Um, now we've started applying this metric to children. Yeah. I'm very worried because we've spoken a little bit about mental health, we've spoken a lot, a lot about weighing ourselves and how that can have a power over ourselves. What do you think, if any effect, that's going to have if we start applying this to, I mean, they're going to do it in reception, they're doing it in year six, so that's four and five-year-old children and 10, 11-year-old. If you tell a 10-year-old girl you're overweight, 
and she goes on the weekend with her dad to rugby every weekend and, and she's just a naturally strong girl and she's in shape but she's overweight because of the metric that we've used I really worry about it's dangerous yeah. you know if, if you're going to create an eating disorder if you're going to create a horrible relationship with her body what's your because our daughter is the same age so my view on it is it should be banned I get why they do it but they sh- they don't need to announce it to anybody. Yeah. Like I've I've had the letter, and obviously I'm quite open that Isabel was classed as obese, and I was like, she's year four, she's in well, year, she's only four years old, so yeah. she's only receptive. And she runs around with my and daughter. She runs around she's all the time. Perfectly fit. But the thing is, is if you tell a ten year old who is going through hormone change anyway, their lives are going to be changing. Yeah. You are going to put them in a position where they think, right, I'm fat. And then you know, don't children have enough of being bullied? Yeah. They do not need this under their under yeah. their you know wing to and the take adults on. and parents. We're supposed to be the safe space. Yeah, we've got definitely. all the children saying the horrible thing for an adult to then come and bang that label on you. And yeah, go, there you are. You're that. Well, yeah. I'm that thing that everyone says is a horrible thing. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's you. That's you. You're that. Yeah. Really? Oh Jesus! Please don't tell anyone. Yeah. No, it is, and it it will damage them mentally as well as they grow up because like, I I'm not afraid to say that I have you know. With food in the past, I've gone. Oh, shall I? Be, shall I eat it? Shall I, like in my slimming world journey, yeah. and I've gone. No, I won't eat it. I'll starve myself. And that's not a way that I want to no, want to go no, because no. that's you don't lose weight doing that. No. You don't. Yes, have a treat if you want one every now and again. Just don't make it every hour yeah. or every minute. Yeah. You know. But Isabel, learning from me, she has learned not to be eating treats all the time, and it goes with. If you're a parent, you should be able to think, oh, I'm not going to buy them that. I know sometimes it's really, really quick and easy just to go into Greg's and get a sausage roll. I Mm -hmm. totally get that. I've been there and I put my hands up. I'm that parent. But if you plan ahead, if you're planning your meal, your meal, then why can't you plan your child's meal at the same time? Absolutely. Because you shouldn't constantly be denying. You said there about, oh, I'm not going to have that. That's not sustainable. You you don't want to be the person that goes to your mum's house. Hey, Sunday lunch, Sunday lunch come around and you go and you've got your little box of sweet potato and, and chicken and you're like oh, I'm Cucumber not uh, sticks. Yeah, yeah 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 I'm not partaking in this family event because I've I've got I've my got thing. This. that's not sustainable and it's such a connection you know I spoke to a client the other day and she was making cookies with her children she said oh is it okay Pete if I if I do this because I understand yeah, I've seen it's not on the nutrition plan and stuff like that I says, it's guidelines I said nutrition plan is guidelines and think about what you're getting from that moment yeah it says because that moment isn't you eating cookies the problem is if it's you eating cookies when your daughter's gone to bed and you're eating, standing there eating 20, yeah? <laughs> that moment there, similar to the Sunday lunch analogy, you're sharing an experience with your daughter. Yeah. Make some cookies, yeah? Stick your finger in the bowl. Eat one when it's ready, when it's nice and warm and hot and it comes out the oven. Eat the cookie, for God's sake. That's the moment because that is a connection with your child. That's not what we're talking about. People take these examples and they go, oh, I can never eat anything. No, you can't. Like you just said there, Hannah. It's not every day. Yeah. Yeah, the problem is... When there's no one else around you doing it and you're sat in the lounge at 11 o'clock at night with your head halfway through a bag of mini rolls. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's, That's when you need to go, whoops, I, I, missed, the, I missed the off-ramp here. I yeah. should have got off this boat about an <laughs> hour ago and I'm we still were, going through we, it. We've spoke about exercise, haven't we? How we have to make exercise fun yeah. in order yeah. to enjoy it and keep going. Yeah, Absolutely. Well, it's, yeah. it's the same with food though as well, isn't it? Because food yeah. becomes a chore or a habit. But if you you're make not food an, an event with your family, like yeah. make an event cooking something or yeah. uh, make it fun, yeah. Yeah. You're gonna, you are going to eat healthier. Yeah. But uh, bad food, fast food. Yeah, it's quick and easy, isn't it? Yeah, healthy food tends to be a bit of time in the kitchen. You got, yeah. which can in itself become a chore. But if you make it fun, if you make it a family event. One of my it's favorite just meals isn't it? with the family is fajitas. Oh yeah, I definitely. mean, a it's nutritionally great. Yeah, but it's not the reason we eat it. The reason we do it is because Lily can cut the peppers, Archie yeah. can cut the onions. We do the chicken together, and it's a finger food. We get together around the table. We all lean over each other, yeah. you know, and it's. Have fun. You eat less because you're only having your one or two wraps and it's great food. Whereas there's zero prep involved in half the stuff that comes yeah. out the shop or out the freezer. And we don't have that emotional attachment to it. It's not, you know, it's not. And that's what Sunday lunches are fantastic. Yeah, I love Sunday lunch. You know, we all I get involved. It's a very, very Sunday community Sunday event. Yeah, you know, Sunday lunches, Christmas dinners, things that a, a dietitian might go, oh my God, all the sugars, yeah. all the things, all the things. Mm. These are part of our culture and, and I do them. On a regular basis, you know, it's not to say that you can't engage in these things. It's just about staying conscious and present about how often you're doing it. So, Hannah, with um, everyone's listening to this right now, we've drawn them in. Yeah. We've got them dangling by a string. They're listening off your every single word. Yeah. 
but they're still not sure. They're still not sure how how they can change their life. Yeah. Okay, so what is one thing you can say to them listening right now to make them go out and do something about it? Know that you want to change. That's the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. So you can't do it for anyone else. You can only do it for yourself. So don't do it for your boyfriend because he's told you that you've got a little little bit of a bum. Yeah. Do it for you. Do it for you. And don't start to, don't go, oh, start tomorrow because your brain knows that you're going to start tomorrow. Yeah. Start today. Yeah. Don't do it tomorrow. You already know that you're going to do it because you've told yourself you're going to start tomorrow. Just do it today. Yeah. And then it's you've done, you've done it. You've you've overcome that battle of, right, I'm going to change my life and I'm going to start healthy eating and I'm going to make myself a better person. The best thing to do is always take a picture as well. Take a picture. And I wish I'd take a picture. Are huge. Of, yeah. like, I have got one picture, but I think I was a little bit into my journey at the time. But take a picture of you naked and then take a picture when you've lost a bit. And always yeah. take inches as well. Don't always go by weight because it doesn't always work. God, I love to hear the, that from you. And what's the pictures? Then? Is that just to physically see to the physically change? physically see change. Like a lot yeah. of people I know put them on fridges. That doesn't work for me because well, my not, brain... Not a naked one, isn't Not a naked one. Because it really upsets the queen around the house. Well, the, the, the woman <laughs> that was that, shock. The woman that took, did the post on, on the Daily Mail, I gave, gave her a load of photos and there's actually one in my me, in me underwear and I didn't realise I'd sent her that, but oh, well, it's done now. <laughs> yeah. Everyone can see it for the world. But um, put them on your fridge. Some people do, you know, some people just put them on their wardrobes for inspiration. I I just, I post mine. So I I always say, I said it on my Instagram live last night. I said, I don't do it for you. I do it for me because when I, because Facebook and social media is really good for time hops and things that pop up, what you were doing this year, last year. And it's great to see where I was, you know, this time last year. And a post popped up the other day and I was six stone lighter. And I was like, oh, that's amazing because I don't like keeping a diary. No. You know, I don't want to write physically, but it's nice to visualize things. You need to see it. It's also also a kick up the arse as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. If if you've lost so much weight and then. You're feeling a bit, oh, and then you see that photo in your, yeah. in your yeah. order. It's like, yeah, well done, keep going. Yeah, keep we going. Can, we, can, we can do yeah. this. I always yeah. tell people it's out of sight, out of mind. Mm. You've got to keep it in front of you. That's why yeah. I talk about you're writing down your goals, putting up the photos, because it's so, so important to keep it front. The life is so distracting now. Yeah. There's so many things that will scream for your attention every day that if you want to get serious about something, you've got to keep it front. You've got to keep them blinkers on. Yeah. You've got to make it purposeful every single day and move towards it with conscious steps which is exactly what you're doing every day hannah it's been wonderful and emotional and uh, <laughs> i think i mean i've made a whole page full of notes there several things i need to be going away and, and really making more of an effort with you really inspired me to make some changes and, and thank you for joining us yeah and i might, might get in trouble for saying this but i think you've been one of our favorite guests so far hannah Aww. absolutely <laughs> yeah. far more interesting than some of them i don't know where we scraped the barrel from before <laughs> i know your story your story is certainly going to inspire me now so congratulations well done thank and i you hope your much. weight journey goes